Hi, I'm Tim Tyler and this is a video about triaxial weaving. Triaxial weaving looks something like this. So this is a basic triaxial fabric. This fabric's got a density of 1, which compares to the density of a corresponding rectangular fabric, which is about 2. And um, the fabric has holes in it though, so um, that's a disadvantage for some applications. It's a type of weaving made where the fabric is composed of strands that go in three different directions. So we've got orange strands going that way, red strands going that way, and yellow strands going that way. And this is the most basic triaxial weaving pattern. If we just show you the frame first of all, this is what I've used to make this with. And then here's the pattern. And um, triaxial weaving has several advantages. Um, one is that it doesn't shear very easily. A rectangular fabric, if you put it at the corners, it distorts itself into a diamond shape, whereas a triaxial fabric doesn't do that. Um, also, it's quite resistant to crimping, so if you apply force, um, the fabric doesn't distort very much. And it has different um, tearing properties and different um, puncture properties to an ordinary rectangular fabric and it's useful for a number of applications traditionally used for snowshoes, um, also used um, for making Japanese baskets and um, in modern times it's used for reinforcing a variety of um, boards, so skis, snowboards, surfboards, skateboards, that kind of thing. The main triaxial weave has some disadvantages as a fabric. In particular, it's full of holes, and that's okay for some things, but for others it's a disadvantage. And the next fabric is designed to illustrate one of the ways of rectifying that problem. Here is a fabric which has the same pattern as the original triaxial weave fabric does, but here we have blue strips which are twice as wide as the main strips in the fabric and um, they're used to fill in the holes basically so they act as reinforcing material and um, this type of fabric has a traditional use it's used in the bases of Japanese baskets so some Japanese baskets are made of a triaxial weave and then the bottom is reinforced with strips of bamboo that go um, through the, um, the between the two of the layers on the triaxial weave the next form of triaxial weaving I'll show you is one that completely covers the plane naturally. And it's over here. So here's the weave. And you'll see this weave is not symmetrical. So the yellow fibres and the red fibres link through each other in a similar manner to a rectangular weave. And then the orange fibres, they go above the yellow layer and below the red layer on um, on these ones and then the other ones it's the other way around so they go over the red and under the yellow layer so um, this ha has a direction this weave it's not um, completely um, isotropic and symmetrical um, the orange fibers are different from the yellow fibers and the red fibers they um, they play a different role in the weave basically a few close-ups Next pattern's another fairly basic one. Here we've got a triaxial weave where every third fibre, if you look at the edge here, every third one is missed out. And that's the same all the way around and the resulting density of the fabric is the same as for a rectangular fabric, so about 2.0. Some close-ups. And here's the whole thing. My final triaxial fabric is the densest one of all. It's here. And it's got a density of 3.0, which is half again as dense as a rectangular weave.
uh, in this fiber all the fa all the fibers are tightly interlocked with one another and um, it's very symmetrical and isotropic so um, there's no kind of spaces anywhere between the um, strands um, but the drawback with this fabric is really its density um, there's only a few applications for which you need three layers of um, fibers on top of each other um, so although um, it's aesthetically pleasing um, this hasn't got all that many practical applications so um, that's my video about triaxial weaving, um, enjoy! <laughs>